Praise the Lord, it's church time. Good to be back in the house of God once again. Glad for all the visitors. I want y'all to get in and do what you feel like the Lord wants you to do. Absolutely. Amen. Uh, remember, starting next Sunday, start our tent revival. Sunday will be at regular church time, 2 o'clock. And Monday through Friday will be nightly at 7 p.m. Come and be with us. We'll be right here on the church grounds. Uh, and I'm praying for all souls. Revival means to be revived. But the reviving is for the church. But the sinners need to be revived. They need to be revived with the salvation of Jesus Christ. Uh, and then we're living in a day and time that we don't have much time before the Lord splits that eastern skies to get as many center folks drawn to Christ as possible. So let's remember the upcoming tent revival and that uh, some center folks will come in and get saved, get delivered, get set free from whatever they're seeing in. Any other requests this morning?
serve my life over to you. Yes. I to change to him. I yes. got to go to what I've got. I thank the Lord. Amen. I think the Lord needs to go to church. You go to church, you can go to church. But if you're not into it, you know, heart's not there. Yes. Amen. 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 She knows the song. But now all of Pentecostal true Pentecostal songs. Mm -hmm. You know, the devil can work up the two. He said, Well, God, I can do that. Where do you think he's at? He's got singers already. Hey. 
Jesus whispered sweet to me when he said to me, said the world's going to talk about you. Now if you follow me, well, I said, Lord, that'll be all right. Well, while they're talking about me, I'll just keep praying on. Oh, glory, hallelujah, my home is up on high. Gonna sit outside my Jesus, when it is from the light. They call us holy rollers, but it don't hurt us. Remember it, and I'm not going to get up there if I can't remember something. So after he passed away, they had to. He was he wasn't here long when he got sick. They uh, took him to uh, uh, Knoxville. I think he sat like a day, and he was he was like gone. But he was very he had everybody got everything that he was good. And he know who I'm talking about because he looked in my eyes. He talked to mine. And he but now this is kind of a fight song. He wants to play along with that. You might not even know what I said. <coughs> but you know, this song means a lot to me because what Jesus done, he didn't have to do it. Mm -hmm. 
getting ready to pull out and here comes the preacher. And he said, oh, I can't believe I have a preacher. Son. <laughs> Went on in and he said, uh, well, when they pray, I'll be up next to the back. And uh, he said that when he got down to pray, I was just slipping out, I was heading toward the front. He said, the minute I stepped down in that altar, oh my God, it's going to say my And he said, when I went to that altar and went down, I come up and shout. Yeah. I think you run outside the church. They ain't going there no more. They did not want him no more. When he truly got saved and started shouting, everything, everything changed. Now, I'm not saying all Baptists are bad. But now, a lot of them do not want shout. They do not want you speaking in tongues. But that's their belief. See, everybody's entitled to their own. But now, uh, the day that... Uh, when he, they said that he, you know, you're saved, babe. You're, you're, you're saved. And he said he was started to be baptized. And some just felt he just didn't feel right about it at all. And he I can't do that. He said, I'll just go down a, a wet center and come up, you know, that's it. But now when he truly got saved, we know it, brother. Nobody don't have to tell us that we got saved. Nobody don't want to have to tell us when God touches us with Tongues. Amen. A lot of people don't want to hear them. Yeah. The tongues, they've got to accept what's in the Bible. Speaking yeah. in tongues is an evidence of the Holy Ghost. And I thank God that He gave me the tongues a long time ago. The Church of God, you know, sister, that little big church down there where we went so many times. We would go and shout, brother. We'd come back shout to their car. You don't have nobody doing that no more. What's happened to the churches? What's, what's happened to them? You know, they come and they start judging each other. They look what you're wearing. Well, how you dress? How your hair is done? And they start finding thoughts. You know, only one person can judge you and judge you right. That is the precious Jesus. Amen. He'll give you righteous judgment. And I thank him today. Thank him that he's been with me, sister. You know, I, I was in this uh, church and never been to it before. And I don't usually tell my age because I'm not young. <laughs> but you know, when I got up there and started telling them what God had done for me, I said, you know, I've been in this for a long time. I know. I read my Bible. This, I know what God said. And I said, if he's done this for me, he could do it for you and you and you. But you've got to believe and you've got to receive uh, and uh, I said, I am 72 years old. You know, God has blessed me, sister. I have osteoporosis that's your area of the bone. And I'm telling you what, I have fallen. And uh, Sister Marlene, when I when I got in the house, I said, Lord, I, I'm going to bring you up. Because I flipped for myself. And Sister Marlene had me on her mind. She called me and she said, Rose, are you all right? I said, God, it put you on my mind. I said, I don't know if I'm all right or not. I said, I'm so shut up. She said, what's happened? I said, I have fear on my mind outside. She said, are, can you walk? I said, yeah, I can walk. She said, let's pray. We started praying. I got up to stop and started walking. And the more I walked, the better I, I said, there's nothing wrong with me, Sister Marlene. 
I said, I thank God. You know, it's just me and Sister Marlene, I've, I've been needing to talk to her, and I go through my daughter. Because I can't put my business calls on the phone. I said, you text her and tell her I need her. And uh, I got her on mine. And she said, uh, Rose, I have you feel about this or that. I said, well, I feel like it would be the God is me. And she said, I feel the same way. You know, just because she's in Indiana, ain't no sign God ain't out there too. You know, God is everywhere that we want him to be. And I thank you for that. I'm going to try to sing one more. I'll try to think of that song with Doug, but it can't fly. We'll get it next time. I just hear people come back, which I think I'm going to back. But now Doug is like to say, Thank you, Lord. Yeah. 
Hey. 
But you know the devil didn't want me to come here today. Because I got a blessing and I could thank God for what I could do. It's so free here. You can't find this freedom, can you, brother? Amen. Anywhere. You can't do it anymore. The word that you can obey God. If you want to run to that door, if you want to go on outside or whatever it is. You know? You know, this is so fine. I'm telling you what. It's a story so unkind in the holy blue and it tells how Jesus stood on the day. Cause the accusers there in the end, yet they found all in him. The man wore the scarlet. Sorrow fell upon his 
Soldiers of the wicked land, smoke their way the wicked land. The land that's called a purple robe, my Savior wore all the night for me. As he stood up forsaken on that day, and they placed upon his head piercing thorns as much as red. His garment was the scarlet purple robe. Words of truth and they proclaim from the lips of God In this man I find no reason he should die. But the multitude they cried, let him now be crucified. The man for the scarlet purple robe. Purple robe Oh, he's 
Faced a mountain that I never faced before. That's why I'm calling on you, Lord. Lord, please hear my prayer. I've never had
Bibles, let's turn to uh, 2 Peter today, in the third chapter. Praise God. Second Peter chapter 3. One in chapter three of Second Peter says, "This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure mind by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandments of us, the apostles." of the Lord and Savior. 
You can be seated if you want. We have talked a lot here lately about going home and, and what Jesus is going to prepare for us that are saved. And we talked a lot about how these folks in the church house that said they're saved, but they're not saved. They're just filling a few because that what they done is as they were growing up, took the church, so they just continued on in a tradition and forgetting the relationship. I don't know if this is going to have anything bearing to do with a lot of this message, but it's been on my mind a while, and a couple of people that are here today, we kind of talked about it a little bit yesterday. It's a shame that we're living in a day and time, sis, that uh, the church is more concerned and worried about, well, that one offended me. Well, that preacher read that scripture that, that totally trumps the sin that I know I'm doing. That preacher offended me. Uh, but not only uh, being offended, uh, but also uh, murmuring and complaining. Amen. There's a lot of murmuring and complaining, Sister Betty, in the body of Christ. Uh, and I'm reminded of the children of Israel when they were delivered from the hands of Pharaoh. Uh, they were chased down to the Red Sea and they started murmuring and complaining. And then even after God delivered them and they crossed over on dry ground, they still continued to murmur and complain. But what happened to them? Before they died. Before they died. They had to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. And I thought to myself, I wonder why, how much of a lot of our wildernesses uh, and our mountains and our deserts is because we've murmured and complained. Uh, because we forgot what chapter 3 here is, is uh, Second Peter is going to talk about. I'll continue on with verse 3. It says, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last day scoffers, which means mockers, walking after their own lust. Oh my. Do we not see that today? We got folks walking around, even folks that claim to be saved that are making fun of and scoffing uh, uh, and, and mock, making a mockery out of God and out of the Holy Ghost. Uh, but I tell you what, if they're not careful, they're going to find themselves like the children of Israel. They're going to keep wandering in the desert until they're going to end up dead. And they're not going to just end up dead in the physical, but they're going to end up dead in the spiritual too because they're going to end up being placed on the left with the goats, which we'll get into here in a little bit, I believe, uh, 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 with all those uh, that are going to have to face the second death, which is hellfire. Uh, verse 4 there says and saying where is the presence of his coming promise. or promise of his coming uh -huh. for since the fathers fell asleep all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation now, I've heard all my life growing up, prepare yourself, prepare the way. Jesus is coming back. And yeah, that's been 43 years now. But that does not mean or, or dismiss the fact that he's coming. That's a fact. Does not dis dismiss the fact that he's closer than what we think. Glory to God. We, we as children of God, we sometimes get so wrapped up, tied up, tangled up, as the song says, I believe, in the things of this world when we're supposed to be not of this world. When we were uh, uh, made new creatures in Christ, uh, he said that, that we were became a peculiar people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now some folks take that to the extreme like you was talking, sister, but 
uh, what kind of hairdo you got and clothes you got on and all that. But that ain't got nothing to do with being peculiar. What being peculiar means is that you you love Jesus Christ. You love His Word. He lives within you and you do everything in your earthly power to do nothing that will displease Jesus Christ or God His Father. It means that when you see somebody, even if you don't know them, and the Lord speaks to you and tells you to go and, and just talk to them, just show them friend, friendliness and kindness, that you go ahead and you do it. Because like you said earlier, I, you, you shouldn't just be on the preach this. Uh, like, like you said earlier, you, we never know what kind of word or what kind of kindness that we may say to somebody that will pick them up out of a miry clay uh, and, and help get their foot back on the right track uh, and them to to look at Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Uh, when Jesus came walking on the water, they asked him, was it him? And he told them, yes, it is I. So he, uh, one of the disciples asked, could he come out to him? And he told him, he said, come. And when he stepped out, he was able to walk on the same water that Jesus Christ was walking on. But glory to God, when he took his eyes off of Jesus, he began to sleep low. And when he began to sleep low, all he did was cry out, Lord, save me. And Jesus immediately reached down and pulled him to safety. So many times we get wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in things about how somebody may have hurt us or... Uh, or, or uh, 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 my, my. Uh, uh, go to complaining because the service didn't go the way we thought it should go. Uh, well, they sang too much. They they, they they didn't dance enough. They didn't roll on the floor enough. They didn't hang from the chandelier enough. They didn't speak in tongues and prophesy enough. They didn't preach enough or they preached too much. They sang too much. They shouted too much. When our minds should be stayed upon Jesus Christ. Glory. My, my. And, and, and we're human. And I've done it myself. Allow Satan to have my eyes begin to wander. Yeah. Well, I know that person saying, but I wish they didn't have to act like that. <laughs> I wish they didn't have to be the loudest in the bunch. <laughs> and then what does that do? They think it's our mind. Yeah. That it talked about it the first. What it say? Stir up your pure mind by way of remembrance. Remembrance of what? Not what somebody did. Not what somebody looks like. Or not what how somebody might be shouting or worshiping or praising. But mind stirred up in what Jesus is. The Bible teaches that he inhabits the praises of his people. Well, he can't get the praise from his people if the people have always got their eyeballs and their minds and their ears on everything else that's around. You want to know why the old timers was able to have church and come to, uh, come to church and be shouting through the door when they get there and shout when they went out? It's because they come with one thing and one thing only. That was Jesus Christ on their minds. Hallelujah. Mine was stayed up on Jesus. We are living in a day and time we need the church to open up their eyes and get their minds stayed upon Jesus. The Lord's everlasting too late. Let me go on here in verse 5. It says this. It says, For this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Now listen to the verse 6. Whereby the world that was, that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. You want to know what that world is and, and you don't know? Go to Genesis chapter 7. And verse 11, it is when 
God instructed Noah to get all of his family, all of his animals, put them in that ark, and then God shut the door. I said it last week, I believe it was, that God will shut doors that no man can open, and God will open doors that no man can shut. Well, that was a door in that day and time, Sissy, that God shut, and no man outside was able to open, and every one of them, including the remaining creatures, all perished. Because they didn't have their minds stayed on God. They thought that, that, that Noah was a crazy man. Glory to God. Somebody told me one time, well, if you have a tent revival, I sure won't be there. When you've got a perfectly good church, why would you go out and underneath the tent in the heat? <laughs> well, one reason is it's not always to be contained to these four walls. And when I go, and we go and we put that tent up this uh, coming week, and we begin to have services, yeah, I'm sure these neighbors are really, really close, like right across the street, can hear my big mouth and all of our singing and worshiping with the doors and the windows shut. But when it gets out there, it's going to flow in every direction, which is what this place and this uh, and, and what God's church needs in this last day and time. He will use the, the foolish things to confound the wise. You, you can't come to a tent revival. Lord, I'm meddling now. Don't you afraid your makeup's going to run? Are you afraid to your hair gel and hairspray is going to give out in the heat, then your mind ain't stayed upon God. It stayed upon your look. So let me tell you what, it doesn't matter what something looks like, he needs the donkey to tell the man that was whooping him to go the direction that God did not want him to go. To, uh, I'm going to paraphrase this. I, I'm sure that donkey probably looked around when God allowed it to have a vocal voice and looked at that man and said, why in the devil are you beating me? Yeah. <laughs> and I can hear that man say, because I want you to go this way. And then I can hear that donkey say, but God is saying go this way. So many times he'll use the foolish things to confound us and to stop us dead in our tracks, but we are still like Saul before he became Paul. Glory to God on his way to Damascus when he was struck blind. We have those spells on our eyes, and we need to be praying for God to put the eyes down on, to loosen up those steps so we can wipe them off and finally see before he sends his son back, and it's everlasting too late. Glory to God. Verse 7 says, But the heavens and the earth, which are now. See, that was the, the earth that was then that was destroyed. So now, verse 7 is talking about the heaven and the earth now. Where we're at now. It says, But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word are kept in store just like preserved, that's right. Just like we, some of us may can things up and put them up, put them up for the next year. My mind. Reserved unto fire. What is that fire? That's hell fire. That's the fire and brimstone. That was supposed to be reserved for Satan and his angels that were cast out of heaven. But because hell is enlarging its borders daily, thank you, Holy Ghost, yes. it has now become a place for those that don't live it and those who claim it and name it but don't have it. Wow. Amen. Mm -hmm. He says, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly man. What is perdition there? That's the sin. That's the sin nature of a person. Verse 8 says, But beloved, be not entangled, or be not ignorant 
of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack. I want you to hear this. Yep. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness. But is long, long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come unto repentance. See, he didn't. He, his purpose of making hell, like I said earlier, was not for you or I or uh, anyone else. It was for Satan and his angels that tried to overthrow God. But because of the sinful nature of human beings in the flesh and people not wanting to live what they know is right. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The Bible tells us that to him that knoweth to do right and he doeth it not, to him it's a sin. Yep, yep, yep. My, my. I don't care how many letters of the alphabet you put together. Yeah, I said it. This, this LGBT whatever. That, that, that's the alphabet game. They can put all the letters to the alphabet that, that they want to. Uh, uh, together. But they cannot take out what God said about that lifestyle of homosexuality. Bless the Lord. <laughs> My. You, you, you can't take out just because you're a fornicator, you can't take out scriptures that talk against fornication. If you're an adulterer or an adulteress, you can't take out those scriptures just because that's coming over the sin that you're doing. That's the problem with the church world today. They've got pastors that cherry pick everything and pat everybody on the back with a knick-knack patty whack, give a dog a bone and tell them they're okay and sugarcoat things. And but all they're doing is being the blind leader who's leading the blind and they're eventually going to fall in the ditch and that ditch is called hell. But I sure hate to be that preacher, teacher, evangelist, or pastor. Because they're going to have to stand for account for leading God's people in the wrong path. And they're going to be more accountable, sis, than the person that Scripture has even said, ignorant enough to follow. Jesus. Well, he's been giving us some hard messages here like this, is you know, the, the name Winds of Pentecost Ministries, I said it, I don't know how many times, but Sissy God gave me that uh, ministry name years ago at an old camp meeting in Old Iowa. And the Lord told me, he says, when the time comes, I'll tell you when to use it. He said, if you'll listen, he said, I, I will use you to help usher in the old time Winds of Pentecost before it comes. Not that it's anything of Gilbert, because Gilbert ain't nothing. Uh, but 416 pounds now. I've lost 108 pounds in the last 18 months, thank God. Huh? Well, 108 pounds in the last 18 months. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm just flesh and bone. Yep. I ate and, 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 and get upset and uh, tore down and Need lifted up just as much as anybody else. There ain't nothing special about me other than the fact that I have made my mind up and, and assured my mind on Jesus that if this is what you want me to do, you give me what to say and where to go and say it, and I'll open my mouth and you can feel it. Amen. Amen. A lot of folks go to that cemetery school. I mean, seminary school. <laughs> Just because they woke up one morning and said, oh, I think I'll go make me a pastor today. <laughs> and you're called if you're a chosen. And just because you decide one morning you're going to make yourself a pastor, doesn't mean you're called and anointed to be a pastor. Amen. But if you are called and you are anointed for any type of ministry, do you not realize that even as a saint of God, if you can't sing, 
You can't play instruments. You've not been taught to preach. You've not been taught to teach. You've not been taught with the gift of prophecy or laying hands on the sick and then recover. God has still called you to be a witness. Yes, he has. The church is lacking it. They think it's all up to the pastor and the uh, uh, evangelist and the, the teachers to do all the preaching and all the witnessing. We are all. But we have all been called the witness. And know this. Betty, you see it. Betty got an award, by the way, from the housing authority. You never know what your actions that someone is seeing or your talk or your body language is touching someone. Yep. Uh -huh. They give Betty an award for the best looking apartment and outside of the apartment from all her flower beds and all the stuff that she done on the inside. She painted a, some walls and put up wallpaper that looked like great. It's gorgeous. She got flyer beds and everything on. She got an award for that yesterday and she thought she was going to get in trouble for all of it. <laughs> but they literally, what's the main folk? The main folk come to her apartment because they wanted to take pictures of it and see what she had done, present her with that light, and then they're going to use it for what? Maybe some type of a brochure for advertisement. And I, I didn't say that to, to down anybody else that lives in the, those apartments or, or anything like that, so please don't take it that way. I, I already uh, called you out on that, Satan. I put you in your place. Yes. I said that because you never know what you do in public that somebody is looking at and watching, even when you think that they're watching for the wrong reason. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, it's going to be a good revival if y'all keep praying and fasting with me.
with fervent peach. My, my, my. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye uh, look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and without blemish. Church, he's coming back after his church. But there's two churches that sit here today. The true church and the uh, 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 apostate church. What I mean by apostate, that's the church that they have the they have all the bells and whistles, but they don't have salvation. They don't have that personal relationship. That's why they don't have the desire that's been talked about for months and months and months. Because they don't have the salvation to, to have the personal relationship to have the desire. Hmm. Brother, when you said you went down uh, and things you knew when you got up that you was truly saved and you got happy and the church didn't want you there no more. And because most of them probably still need to go down to that very same altar and catch a little bit of what you got. Jeremiah the prophet said that every time he tried to shut up and not talk about Jesus or mention uh, him and God anymore, that it was like fire shut up in his boat that he could not contain and he had to let it go. The church needs to catch on fire once again. Church has played church too much and the pastors have, have, they need to get out of the kitchen. And out of the sugar jar. Because that's what that's what their messages are coming from. They're starting to, to turn into like Joe Olstein. Well, Lowe's right. Truth the truth. There's a difference in a preacher that has it and a preacher that tells you what tickles your ear. There is a scripture that tells us be woe or to a uh, woe and to be careful uh, of the false teachers and doctrines that have itching ears. What's itching ears? It's talk, uh, talking about uh, the ones that sugarcoat things to make you feel good, to make you feel all right in your sin, knowing that they're self full on that not only they're going to hell for teaching you that garbage, but that, that you're going to end up there if you don't wake up and smell the coffee. My, my, my. Tells us to beware of false prophets. That's right. Prophet starts with the preacher. That's what the prophets was. That's why uh, all the prophets through the Bible were called prophets because they brought the word. They brought what uh, God gave them to give to whoever needed it. That's what a preacher does. Whether he has a pastor position or title, I should say, Evangelist, assistant, teacher, apostle, whatever, bishop. Those are just titles. Yep. You can have all the titles all day long until, uh, until there's no more paper in this world. The title down. But that don't amount to a hill of beans if you don't have the anointing. Thank you, Jesus. You might want to testify.
But God blesses those that are willing to do what he tells them to do. You know, and I know that God used me to bless that lady that I blessed, and I was more of a blessing to her probably than maybe the dress was to me, but the dress is a big blessing to me, but she really needed my blessing as well. She is what I get, you know, blessed her with. So I want to thank God for that. You want it? Yes. 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 Yes.
take out Sunday school teacher.
Somewhere beyond the grave, oh, there is a land. Jesus went to prepare by his own hand. Oh, yes. And for the sake of my grace, oh, there is a resting place. said do you want your daughter to die and she said no I don't and she began to pray and my uh, was healed it was healed there was Amen. nothing left in there and I have not had any kind of problems with that 
ever since I was little. And the only thing happened is when I got COVID, it kind of tried to come back on me. But that was because of all that. But I thank God that I had a praying mother. And I thank God that uh, all of us that had praying mothers, we are blessed. And all of us that had praying fathers are blessed too. And like Rose said there a while ago, she got me together with my husband. She had a part in it because the woman that raised Rose was my uh, husband's aunt that was his mother's sister. So I thank God for all that. And in fact, I even got married in uh, Bertie's house there, the Bertie that raised her. And I even got married there and I've got the picture on my wall of there. So and she was there too when I got married. So I thank God for all the blessings that he's bestowed upon me. And just thank God for this day. It's been blessed from the time we got up. And, and I just pray uh, traveling mercies upon you all as you go back. and. I pray you'll be blessed for coming today, and I know you already have been blessed in the Spirit, but I know He'll bless you the rest of the week, too, and come back as many times as you can. You're very welcome, and I just praise God, so we'll end the service. And don't forget the revival, not this coming week, but the next week. There'll be revival starting the 11th through the 16th. Be morning here on a Sunday. I mean, uh, two o'clock here on Sunday, and then the revival will start the next night out in the tent on the parking lot here. So, praise God for that. Fathers, we come before you. We thank you for all the blessings you bestowed upon us, everything that you've done for us. Go with us as we go our separate ways. Protect us over the highways. Keep us in your care. Help us to be what you want us to be. Bring us back at the appointed time, whatever you want us to do, and whatever you want us to say, that we will be the masterpiece for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.